Hi, this is Rick Fass. Uh, I want to talk to you today about this red plate amp that I recently got. Um, the red plate amplifier is made in Phoenix, Arizona by Henry Heinstadt. Uh, I found out about these um, through a player, a blues player in uh, Louisiana, who apparently had seen one of these from, I guess, Tim Betts was playing someplace. And so, uh, this particular play was just absolutely knocked out by this amplifier. Um, so I did a little research, went online, found red plate amps, started reading about them, and uh, I was just noticing all the players that are starting to use this, uh, this amplifier. So uh, I called Henry, and we had a great conversation about amps, about his design, uh, his philosophy, and uh, it's exactly what I was looking for. Um, I've, I've used and still own um, some old Fender amps, uh, Fender Pro Reverb, or Fender Deluxe Reverb, um, and a, a Twin Reverb, all having the AB763 circuitry, which is the typical 63, 64 black, and 65 black face circuitry. Um, I've also uh, owned a few Dr. Z amps, which are really, really good. Um, but hearing the sound clips that Henry has on the, uh, on the website really intrigued me. And uh, Tommy Castro is one of the guys that um, is now using these amplifiers, and he's definitely one of my favorite blues players. Uh, and some of the other players that I just found out about are using uh, red plate, like Elvin Bishop. Uh, great player, and Elvin's been around many, many years. Uh, not to mention uh, Kid Anderson, and there's just a whole slew of players that have just gotten turned on to these amps. So fortunately, uh, I've been able to acquire one of these. Um, the, the simplicity of it, the small footprint, the lightweightness of it, really makes it uh, a, a gigging amp that's just absolutely killer. Um, I'll go through some of the features on this. In fact, I'll go through all the features on it. In the studio, it, it's incredible as well. Um, I prefer to have an amp that has a, uh, a, a preamp volume control, also three tone controls being treble, bass, and mid-range, and then having a master volume and these guys interact really, really well. You can get a little bit of overdrive, a little bit of hair, if you will, on the preamp signal, and then you can, depending on where you have your, uh, your output uh, volume control, that'll depend on the overall uh, cleanliness or the, the dirtiness of the tone. Um, on the guitars that I build or that I use, um, I make sure that I have a volume control that is very uh, adaptable to being able to turn down the volume, not lose any of the highs, and still maintain proper tone, and the, uh, the red plate amp just cleans up beautifully. Uh, in addition, uh, we talked about uh, a reverb circuit, and Henry said that he's got it together on the reverb, which he does. It's a killer reverb circuit, so all I really needed was uh, just an intensity uh, or depth of how much reverb I wanted. Uh, the presence control is nice. It really helps you dial in high end or low end or mids, or just a little bit of a reduction of whatever it is that you need. It helps, helps you dial it in from the, uh, from the three, to, uh, three tone controls. Uh, another cool feature of the amp is the overdrive circuit. Now keep in mind that this is all one channel. Okay, so the, uh, the overdrive circuit does integrate with the one channel. Um, it can go from a, just a, a screaming uh, overdrive, but was still with clarity as well as just enough overdrive to give it a real sweet singing kind of tone. Um, in addition, if you take a look at the bass control, it has the word just below, it has the word raw. So by clicking, I'm going to click, you can hear it click. Uh, I've actually turned off the tone control so we're bypassing what's known as the tone stack. So we're going from the preamp volume control right through to the outputs. Um, and that tonal quality will also be part of the overdrive circuit if you choose to be. In other words, how you have the preamp set is how the overdrive is going to uh, react. Uh, in addition, uh, Henry had asked me if I wanted to have some kind of a, a country kind of flavor to it, and I said, sure, why not? So he added uh, on the treble control here a little bit of a push-pull, changing the EQ of the amp, making it a little bit scooped, a little more Fender-esque kind of, kind of flavor. Uh, so I can have 
a, the straight ahead uh, EQ that we have, uh, or scoop it, or just bypass it completely, which is really cool. Uh, in addition, uh, what, what Henry's learned over the years, and he's been kind enough to share, is that it, it, the mid-range is really what helps carry the tone. It really is what projects, and so there is a, a mid-range uh, boost, which is either uh, switchable through this volume control right here. You can do it manually, or I have it set up on the, um, on the external pedal, so I have both the drive and the mid boost at my foot. Um, that's pretty much it. You have standard power on and a uh, just a standard standby, so you have all that going on. The bright switch uh, is set pretty much to um, uh, it's 120 picofarad. Uh, you could vary that with Henry depending on what your needs are. Uh, this is a 6L6 based amplifier uh, using two. Um, Real simple 12AX7 preamps with a 12AT7 in the reverb circuit. Um, for speaker, uh, Henry likes to use a, uh, a Tonker, uh, an Eminence Tonker light. He likes it because the whole design of the amp is based on uh, a grab and go type thing. And my preference, I, I'm more of a, of, a, of a Weber speaker kind of guy, so I used, um, I'm using a Weber Michigan speaker which kind of emulates uh, an EV12L. Um, so add a little more weight to the amp, but I'm good with that. Okay, we're going to take a look at the back of the amp now. Um, you'll notice that here's the two 606 outputs. Uh, Henry made it very, very easy, very accessible to get to the tubes that you can, you can change them out with no problem. If worse comes to worse, if you have to take the back off, you've got four screws on each side, it comes right off. Um, let's see. Also, the foot switch has its labeled foot switch. Um, I chose not to get a, an effects loop. Uh, Henry was very much in favor of it, especially if you're going to be using delay pedals, any kind of time pedal that, uh, or time effect that uh, does affect time, he highly recommends uh, using a, uh, an effects loop. Maybe my next one will have that, but this one doesn't. Um, the preamp out is a great feature. Uh, for recording or if you're using uh, live PA and you need to go right into the board, it, it's killer. Um, now, Henry also, being a guitar player, uh, realized that there's, on occasion you might want to use uh, another cabinet. Now, again, I've got a, a single 12 in here, but there's times when maybe I'd like to have a 15 or two 10s or another whatever. Um, so he made it real easy to accommodate uh, a 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 8 ohm load. Uh, the only downside of doing this is that in order to add the other cabinet, you'd have to come out with a Y-jack. Well, Henry's just ingenious said, hey, you know what, let's put the output jack over here. So these are actually paralleled, so all you need to do is go from the cabinet back into this one and you're done. Just change the impedance here and you're good to go. I mean, it's, it's so simple and I don't know why other people don't do it, but maybe that's what makes Henry unique. Um, he's using a, a short uh, pan for reverb. Uh, it sounds killer. It's a, it's a three spring or a six spring and um, absolutely just killer. killer. So the layout is real simple um, uh, and it's all user friendly which makes it just absolutely wonderful. Over here on the, uh, on the left side you'll see that there's a tube chart. Sorry, there's a schematic over here on the left side. So if, if for some reason you need some work on the amp and you can't get it to Henry, uh, an amp tech can definitely see it and he can figure it out real quick. We certainly can call Henry and I'm sure Henry would be more than happy to, uh, uh, to assist. On the other side, you see the tube chart. You know, but again, there's, uh, there's 12AX7s and uh, 187. It makes it real easy. Um, uh, I asked Henry about tubes and he said, you know, you can use cheap tubes, you can use great tubes, it's all good. So my choice of 6L6 is I'm using a uh, TAD Tube Amp Doctor short bottle uh, 6L6. I've had real good success with those in my 6L6 amps and I'm real happy with that. So that's what it is on the back of the amp. Uh, in addition, uh, there's a nice little carrying case that came with the amp.